Hello, thank you for joining me at John Galt Solutions. My name is Dr. Holt Wilson. I'm a professor of marketing at Central Michigan University, as well as a co-author of the book, Business Forecasting with Forecast X. In this segment, I will be discussing how we can combine forecasts from two methods to see if we can get a better forecast than using either one alone. Here we see that in this graph, we have the actual Abercrombie and Fitch sales as the blue line, the forecast we get from a regression as the red line, and the forecast from a winner's forecast as the green line. And we see that we get somewhat different forecasts. Both might be reasonable, but maybe by combining them, we get a better forecast. At the end of the data stream down here, I have the mean absolute percentage errors for the two forecasts, 9.18% for the regression forecast, 7.51% for the winner's forecast. Now the question is, can we do better than either of those if we combine the methods? Before we can combine methods, we have to make sure that when we do a regression, that the intercept term is essentially zero. If the intercept term is either significantly positive or significantly negative, then doing a regression combination would create a bias in our forecast. So to begin with, we want to do just a simple regression in um, Excel to see whether that constant term would be zero. So we want to click on the Data tab and then on Data Analysis. And once we're in Data Analysis, we want to select Regression. And we want to uh, select for the Y variable the original values of A and F sales during the period that we have data. So I stop here at September of 09 and then I want to select my X range which will be the re regression and winter's forecast for the same time period. So we're going to stop here. We want to make sure that we have labels checked because we have labels in the uh, first row of our data and then we simply say OK. We get a lot of results here, but there's only one thing that we're really interested in, and that is whether this intercept of 5,032.93 is at essentially zero. And we can't tell by just looking at that number. We have to look at the p-value. And the criteria will be that if the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, we can conclude that the intercept is essentially zero. So again, if this p-value is greater than 0 0.05, that's assuming we're working at a 95% confidence level. If the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, we can assume that this value for the intercept is essentially zero. So in this case, we're fine, we're good to go. Um, we can combine the forecast. So I'm going to go back to um, the original data screen, and I'm going to capture um, all of the data and um, notice that I captured not only the historic data, but the regression forecast through the forecast period and the winner's forecast through the forecast period. Because we want the regression model and forecast X to use what those individual models had already predicted. Then we'll invoke uh, forecast X. So we'll go to add-ins, click on forecast X. And we'll check to be sure that the data are correctly identified as being in columns. A forecast period of 12 contains dates. It's quarterly data with one row of labels. Then we'll go to forecast method. We're going to select multiple regression. And in the multiple regression tab, we see the dependent series is correctly identified as A and F sales. I'm going to click on the Advanced tab because we have to tell it to use the existing values. So I want to click on Use the Existing Values. I want to click on Remove the Empty Value so it ignores those cells for A and F sales that are zero. But notice now we also want to click on Constant is Zero. That is, we're going to force the regression to go through the origin because we've already determined that the constant term is statistically not different from zero. It's essentially zero. We'll click on OK. And we'll go to statistics. We'll look at the adjusted R square. Um, and uh, maybe we'll get the mean. 
we'll make sure the MAPE mean absolute percentage error is checked. We'll go to more statistics. For accuracy, we're going to select the root mean squared error. And for regression, we're going to uncheck analysis of variance table and click on the p-value. We'll say OK. And for reports, in this case, let's check the standard report as well as the audit report. And we'll check the fitted values table and say finish. So we're going through a lot of arithmetic to, to do this. Um, and when we get our results, um, here we have the audit trail. And we'll talk about this line that drops to zero. It's because we had zeros or blank cells there for um, Abercrombie and Fitch sales. Um, and I'm going to come down here and look at the equation. Particularly notice that the constant term is zero. And then we have coefficients for the regression and winners. We'll talk about those in just a, just a second. So I'm going to come down further. Here we see what the combined forecast would be. Um, quarter by quarter during the forecast horizon. Um, we get the um, dates, the original data, what the new model, which is now a combined model of the regression and the winner's forecast and the error um, in this table. And if we come down to um, here, we get the regression results. Um, we see that the coefficient for the constant term is zero, so we set it to be zero. And we get the coefficients for the regression and for the winner's model. These coefficients tell us the weights that we should provide for the regression and the winner's model. And those are automatically applied when we did the prediction in Forecast X. And we see that the regression gets a weight of 47%, and the winner's gets a project. Um, a weight of 52%. These typically add close to 1. Here we see it's um, 0.99. It's actually a little higher than that if we add those two together using all the decimals. I think it comes out to 0.996. So very close to 1. Uh, so these forecasts that we have um, at the top of our screen, these quarterly forecasts weight the regression at about 47% and the winners at about 52 percent. Interestingly now, we can compare the root mean squared error. Here it's 6.02 percent, which is better than it was when we had either the regression model or the winner's model. So by combining, we get a better forecast than we could with either model alone. And if we go back to the standard report, we can get rid of this line that uh, shows the actual dropping to zero by simply looking under the actual A and F sales and scrolling down um, to um, change those zeros. So I'm just going to scroll over them, push delete, and as I push delete you'll see that um, the zeros are eliminated as is the blue line that drops to zero. So we have a graph that shows what the combined forecast is and it looks quite good.